Welcome back students taking math for business and finance and math applications and we're working on the chapter 10 summary practice test. Um, we're going to be doing problems 3, 4, and 5 in this video and saving problem 6 for the next video. And so let's go down to problem number 3. All right, let's get there. And let me get my pen. And problems 3 and 4 are related to each other and you'll see in, uh, when I get done with problem 3 how 4 is related. Okay, so it says here on May 6th, Jim borrowed 14000 that's principal, at a rate of 7.5%. Jim plans to repay the loan on March 11th. Okay, so now notice, if we draw a timeline here, this is May 6th, and this is March 11th. So this goes through the end of the year at 12.31, all right? So that's going to help us when we're looking at the, uh, the Julian calendar in order to figure out how many days between May 6th and March 11th. Now assume the loan is on ordinary interest, which is 360, and how much will Jim repay on March 11th? So how much he'll pay is the maturity value, principal plus interest. And we know the principal is 14,000, but we have to figure out the interest. So interest is principal times rate times time and to get the interest we have 14,000 times 0 0.075 for our interest rate times okay we're going to put that over 300 for our time we're putting it over 360 but we have to go up and figure out how many days okay so we're over here at May 6th that's 126 and we're going to the end of the year at 365. So we take our 365 and subtract 126 because it's 9, 3, 239. But that's to the end of the year at December 31st. So we're up here at January 1st. We have to go all the way over to March 11th. So that's an additional 70 days. That means the number of days is 309. So we put 309 in the numerator and then do the math. So we have 14,000 times 0 0.075 times 309 and that gives us 324,450 in the numerator and oops, three, 360 in the denominator. So when we divide that by 360 we end up with nine hundred and one dollars and twenty five cents for the interest so if we have nine oh one twenty five for interest and we know our principal is fourteen thousand right? so it's fourteen thousand and we add our interest that's fourteen thousand nine oh one twenty five that's our maturity value that's how much Jim has to repay on March 11th Okay, principal plus interest. All right, problem four is basically saying the same thing, except this time we want to know what it is based upon the exact interest, which is 365 days. So everything is basically the same. 14,000 times 0 0.075 times 309 exact days over, now instead of 360, it's over 365. So we're still going to have 324,450 in the numerator, but this time we're going to divide by 365. So 324,450 divided by 365, and that gives us um, $888.90. And of course, we add that to the principal of 14,000. And that means 14889 is the payoff amount, the maturity value. Notice that um, for, for um, 360 days, it was 14901 uh, whatever, 901 Okay, and for the 365 days, it's the 14,000, right? 889. 
Notice that when you're dividing by a few more days, your figure is going to be lower. So make a mental note, you know, just something that I keep in the back of my head here that oh, as I'm dividing, if my number was greater than 900 and one dollar, then I know I'm doing something wrong there because I'm dividing by more days. My uh, ending interest has to be less. Okay, just as an FYI. Right, number five. Um, Claire Russell is buying a car. Her November monthly interest was 210. So my interest is 210 at a seven and three quarter percent interest. So that's my rate, seven and three quarters. What is Claire's principal balance? So we're going to have to find the principal to the nearest dollar at the beginning of November. And we're using 360 days. Okay. Round, do not round the denominator in your calculation. Okay. So Remember, our formula was interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And instead of memorizing four different formulas, I only remember the one. But when I have to manipulate the formula, like in this case here, I need to find P, the principal. right? I set uh, my principal equal to, and I always just put in the numerator the interest. And whatever is left over, okay, in this case, it's going to be the I use the interest and I use the principal. Right? I have to put the rate and time in the denominator, whatever's left over. So now I just uh, fill in you know, the variables. My interest is 210 and my rate is 7 and 3 quarters, so that's 0 0.0775 times. And okay, for my time, um, there's 30 days in November, and we're using 360. Okay. So we're going to, uh, we have to do the math in the denominator first. So we keep our 210 in the numerator, and we do the math in the denominator. We have 0 0.0775 times 30, and that gives us three, I'm sorry, 2.325, and that's all over 360. So when I divide, I keep my numerator again, because I still have math to in the denominator. So if I take my 2.325 and I divide it by 360, I end up with 0 0.006483, okay? So I take my 210 and divide it by 0 0.006483, and I end up with, let me get my pen here, come on, where is it? There it is. Um, I end up with 32,516 and uh, 296, or I'm going to round that off to 30 cents. 32,516.30. Okay, so that's what my principal balance, uh, my principal was. And uh, I'm going to round to the nearest dollar. So if it's that's 30, it's uh, less than 50. So my answer is 32,516. All right, and that's all there is to that. Okay, so. Uh, the next problem is using the U.S. rule, and generally that takes some time, so I'll see you in the next video.